Hi, my name is Josh Moran, and I work here in the IT department at THEC slash TSAC, and I want to welcome you to the Financial Aid System of Tennessee, or FAST for short. This video is intended for high school staff who verify high school completion or submit final high school GPA to the state of Tennessee, or that monitor application completion for Tennessee Promise dual enrollment or the middle college scholarship programs. So if you currently use eGrants, then you need to watch this video. This is the first video in a series covering the FAST system for high school users. Uh, to see my other videos, uh, go to the THEC YouTube page. Hopefully the link came with this video, but if it didn't, just send me an email at josh.moran at tn.gov. That's josh.moran at tn.gov. Also, you can go to the, uh, or go to YouTube uh, and actually search for THEC Information Systems Groups. That's us. Uh, if you search for that, our channel will be the first one that comes up. You can click on that, look at playlist, and then you can click on the uh, fast training videos for high school counselors, and you'll see our, our training videos for your group. Uh, if you do get curious, you can go through, look at those other training videos for colleges or agency users just to get an idea of uh, what we're doing for those. Uh, those people have been in the, the system for a lot longer and we've done a couple other different things. So it could give you some ideas of what, what we can do for you. So feel free to take a look at that. Uh, so uh, this is the first video in a three video series. Uh, this particular one is going to cover a general introduction to FAST, the login process, our dashboards, the menu layout, and the system timeout. The next video uh, will cover the student verification process and the update GPA and test score screen. The third video uh, will cover the planned layout of a rewrite of the student verification process. It should be a relatively quick video, uh, but we wanted to talk about some of the things we're planning so you can give us feedback and suggestions about what needs to be changed for the high school graduation verification and final GPA submission in the system. Also, if you have any submission or suggestions for future videos, uh, feel free to send them my way. Again, uh, josh.moran at tn.gov. That's M-O-R-A-N. So let's get the big questions out of the way. So what is FAST? Uh, FAST is the replacement system for e-grants. It is the sole system that you'll need in order to complete all those essential functions you perform for high school students in their state financial aid. Next, which browsers? Uh, so you can access FAST in any modern web browser. However, we only test out the system using Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Safari, and Firefox. You'll see some small differences in how information is displayed in each of those browsers. Uh, when we do run into an issue with something looking different in different browsers, we'll generally pick what looks the best in Chrome. However, there shouldn't be any major uh, differences with using uh, any of those four browsers. What you can't use, however, is Internet Explorer. If you try to access FAST using Internet Explorer, you're going to be blocked from getting into the system. Uh, just IE is no longer getting all of the updates that other uh, browsers are getting, and it doesn't support some of the things we do in FAST. Uh, for a lot of you, I know eGrants was the sole reason you had IE installed on your computers. Uh, however, uh, for those of you currently using eGrants, once you get access to FAST, I would still keep IE on your computers for at least the time being in case you need to get back into eGrants. For example, if we run into an issue in FAST, you can then uh, pop back into eGrants and do your job until we get the issue fixed. So you can't use IE with FAST. Um, but I'm hoping no one's going to be mad about that, though. So when will you get access? Uh, it's uh, uh, If you watch the December demo vid, um, it's taken us a little bit longer. We got distracted by make, uh, to make some updates for uh, some new legislation that came up last fall. Uh, we're done with that, so we're doing the final prep work, um, doing all the documentation and all the just the final touches to get you access. So hopefully it should not be that much longer. Uh, next, uh, do you have to use FAST? Uh, yes, eventually. 
Uh, we will be running FAST and eGRANS at the same time up until we feel that everyone is ready to transition to FAST. Our goal uh, after releasing FAST, though, will be shut down eGRANS as soon as possible. Uh, so I would take this time to learn FAST while we're running both systems and only use eGRANS when you need to. Uh, we will need to turn off eGRANS very soon, and you want to be prepared when that happens. Uh, one note, though, during that time when we are running both FAST and eGRANS, they share the same database, meaning that uh, anything you update in one system will immediately show up in the other system. So there is no need to do uh, double data entry. Um, so feel free to go back and forth between the two systems, but you don't need to replicate your work uh, in both places. Uh, you make the update in one place and it's made in both places. The URL to access FAST is fast.tn.gov. Uh, like you, we got tired of trying to remember clipslink.tsac.tn.gov slash forward slash something something. You know, I worked at a college for 13 years uh, using eGRANS and an additional five here at the state. And I still don't remember that eGRANS uh, address. Uh, so going forward, fast.tn. Dot gov is all you need to remember. Uh, though, uh, don't try to log in just yet. Uh, you'll need to wait until you get the notification from us that you can access it. Also, before you can get access to the new system, your school will need to submit a signed entity agreement form to TSAC before you're given access. Uh, this is the agreement that Robert Biggers has been sending out. Uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, contact Robert. He can help you out uh, with uh, making sure you all get that signed. A couple of notes about FAST. Uh, so you're going to see some familiar pages from eGRANTS. We have not completely rewritten the entire system. And so we're currently using uh, a lot of the pages from eGRANTS. Uh, feel free to make comments or suggestions about what you see and what you want done to them. Uh, one of the FAST or one of the benefits of FAST is that we're able to make system modifications a lot easier than we were in eGRANTS. Uh, to put it into perspective, uh, eGRANTS was already old when a lot of the students who will be submitting GPAs for this summer were born. Uh, a lot has changed in computer software since then. So uh, we are uh, looking forward to making those changes and they're a lot easier for us to make. Uh, Next, uh, we elected to keep the interface very minimal and fast. The emphasis has been on maximizing the usefulness of the system as a tool and maximizing the workspace on the screen. You'll see it in a little bit, but the fast interface by itself is only about an inch and a half tall, depending on your screen setup. All the other screen space is reserved for the working area of the page, your verification roster or report output, for example. Um, also, when designing FAST, we wanted to limit how much a person would have to be retrained, uh, retrained in order to do their job. I feel strongly that if you're currently using eGRANS, you should have a minimal amount of downtime while learning the new system. Uh, the hardest parts will be learning how to navigate FAST, but once you get to where you want to be, I expect you'll be able to recognize how to do your job right away. So if you're anxious about transitioning to a new system, uh, don't be. Uh, you won't have any issues with the new system. Um, but still, uh, please watch my videos. We also have an updated user guide. You can find this in the help menu in both eGRANTS and FAST. It's titled FAST User Guide. Okay, so let's get to it. Uh, the login process. The login and password is the same as eGRANTS. Uh, so you don't need a new login and password to access the, the new FAST system. You're going to use your FAST or your eGRANTS login and password. Also, while we have both systems up, keep in mind that any updates to the eGRANTS password will also uh, impact your FAST password and vice versa. Uh, so um, don't let it fool you. If you've changed your eGRANTS password uh, recently, Keep in mind, you just changed your FAST password uh, at the same time. So let me log in.
So uh, similar to eGrants, I've logged in for the first time on this account. It's telling me I need to update my password. I'm going to change it using the new password requirements we implemented earlier this year. So uh, one of the changes from eGrants that we have implemented a user agreement at login. Uh, the, I would make sure to read it over it the first time you logged in. Uh, just so you're familiar with everything that's in there. However, you only have to um, agree to it. Uh, the very first time you log in, uh, you shouldn't have to uh, accept it again unless we make an update to the agreement. If we have changed something into it, we're going to ask that you agree to any changes that we've made. We also reserve the right to uh, ask you to agree to it uh, at some point in time when we feel that you may need a refresher or uh, it's been a, quite a bit of time since you last looked at it. So, uh, but we don't expect that to happen very often. When you see the agreement, you do need to be on the last page of the agreement before the I agree pops up. But once you see that, you can agree to it. Like eGrants, we have a registration code. It's going to come inside uh, to your um, email account that we have on file for you. When you do get that email, it's going to be in the same format that you would have gotten for eGrants. Copy and paste it. Paste it into the window. You can choose to register this computer. This is going to allow you to skip that registration code the next time you log in from this location. Uh, but like eGrants, you'll only want to register this computer to skip this step if you're in a trusted location, your home, your workplace, However, if you're using a, a computer in a lab or some type of public location, you don't want to register that computer at that spot. Again, only in a trusted location. Okay, so we've logged in. Uh, first thing that you probably noticed is the dashboard. Uh, the Fast Home page is actually a dashboard. It's got multiple items, um, multiple pages. Uh, the current dashboard is no way meant to be a finished product, but we put it out there, threw a couple things in just to give you an idea of what we can do. Uh, so that way you can be thinking about what we need to add. And so if you have any ideas for dashboard items, uh, send them our way. We can put them in there. And uh, what we had in mind, though, uh, feel free to, to change it up if you have some different ideas, is we wanted to put items in the dashboard to give you quick access to um, whatever metric it may be that may help you uh, uh, give you an idea about how things are currently going or to give you a, a warning sign that it's not something that you normally look at, but uh, if there's been some change, you can quickly get access to that data on the home page. Um, the items that we have in here currently, so verify and verify counts. Uh, this is a bar chart listing out the counts of students who have not been verified or have been verified for the graduation year listed below the chart. Um, this, these counts on these uh, in this graph right now uh, should match your uh, verified and verified rosters inside the system. You'll see that one a little bit later on. The second one, eligible students by program. This will give you the count of hope. NAFI and TSAA eligible students at your institution, and it will do it uh, for the last three graduation years. It will also give you those. Um, so um, right here, I'm in a test instance. It doesn't have data for these upcoming years, but normally I, I would expect you to see um, counts of HOPE eligible students, NAFI eligible students, TSAA eligible students, and then you can compare it to the last two academic years to see if there's been any major changes. And to get those exact counts, uh, just one note, what you do is just hover over that bar and it's going to give you the counts represented by that either uh, bar chart, line chart, pie chart, for example. Same thing applies over here. I skipped it earlier, but to see the exact number in your verified counts or your verified counts, just hover over that bar and you can see that number there. The next one is award amounts by program. Um, this is a pie chart just to give you the dollar amounts and student counts for each of the major state programs for the graduation year selected here at display at the bottom of that pie chart. Um, if you hover over that, you can see, so for HOPE, you have 41 students awarded a total of 73,300 bucks. 
If you hover over the other ones, Hope with Aspire, 11 students for 27,900 bucks. Uh, if we go to TSAA, 15 students for 15,934. So uh, you can use this chart uh, uh, in case you needed those counts for, say, a report that you're working on or a presentation that you're giving. Uh, we just threw it in there. Uh, pup chart may not have been the greatest idea, but we wanted just to, to do something a little bit different from the other ones. Again, just to like uh, get you thinking about what we can do, uh, different things that we can do. Um, if you watch the demo video we put out in December, we've added one additional one since then. Uh, it's down here at the bottom. Um, by the time that you get access to this one, there's a good chance that we're actually going to move this off of this first page and create a second tab um, and put that on the second tab just so it um, organizes the data a little bit better uh, and creates less clutter. But this newest one is for your TMP applications. This is a single year chart, uh, not like this other one that does three graduation years, but this one is reporting for the graduation year 2022, the number of applications submitted for that graduation year. Um, then it's going to have three additional uh, bars in here. First, to tell you how many of those uh, students have completed their FAFSA. Um, again, I'm in the test instance. It just doesn't really have that data or current data for this graduation year. But you would have potentially, uh, depending on the time of the year, Additional numbers for out of that number, who has done their mandatory meetings? And we combine both the meeting one and man meeting two. Um, both of them have to be completed to be counted here, uh, as well as one additional chart or bar for who have uh, out of this application pool completed their fall community service for promise. So again, just to give you a quick way at login, if you look at this one, you'll be able to know, oh, my promise application count is 97 today. Out of that number, here's how many have done the FAFSA. Uh, here's who've done their mandatory meetings. And finally, who've done their fall community service. And again, once you start using these, if you get an idea, uh, send it our way. Uh, we'll send it through the necessary channels, get approval, and we can put it into the system. It's relatively easy for us to put these items in here. Uh, we've been, um, for college users, for example, we've uh, been adding them for the last fall and winter time. One note, if you're anywhere else in the system, uh, you've been doing some other work, if you ever click on the TN logo, it's gonna bring you back to the dashboard, so just a quick way uh, to get back to here, all of the data that we would put on the dashboard, uh, nothing will have PII or uh, any sensitive data in it. So it's a quick way if you're looking at something on your screen, you need to clear it out in case you have someone coming into your office. You can hide any type of sensitive data by hitting that T and logo. The next item that we're going to go over today is the menu structure for FAST. Uh, so we decided to go with the horizontal menu in order to maximize the workspace on the screen left and right. Uh, so this allows us to display more information on rosters and limit how often you would need to scroll left and right. Wasn't a big deal for high school rosters and reports, but colleges have several uh, rosters that had to scroll left and right uh, just because there was so much data on those rosters and the screens were just not big enough. So. Uh, we moved that menu up to the top of the screen. We looked at all your existing eGrants items and we broke it down into six categories plus an additional option for uh, being logged out and returning to the login screen. When we'll have access, these are the items that you'll have access to in the menu. Uh, reports. So uh, this one item uh, contains all your existing reports options from eGrants. They're all the same reports. They'll return the same exact output. The data is going to be exactly the same. Feel free to go in when you get access to go rep run reports from both places. Uh, you'll see that they are the exact same information. There's no change from where you run those reports. But what we did inside of FAST is that we combined all the uh, older reports options and the new reports options into the same page. 
We organized them in the same way that the older report option was organized in eGRANTS, just to help out with the transition into FAST. So if you're familiar with uh, eGRANTS reports, we have the same categories in FAST. You have two main options, activity and high school. Activity then has the two subcategories of lottery and scholarship. Uh, so the same as eGRANTS. What we did with the new reports uh, from eGRANTS was then stick them into these same categories uh, that the older reports options was uh, uh, categories or had how it had the older report. I'm sorry, how the older reports option in eGRANTS uh, was categorizing their reports. Um, if you go into the user guide on page nine, we have a crosswalk to help you locate that um, that eGRANTS report. It'll tell you exactly where that report is located inside of FAST, inside of these categories. So it may not be a bad idea. Um, the user guide it has a lot of good information in there, but that page nine in particular, hopefully the page number doesn't change by the time you get it, but um, you can print out that one page, you can keep it somewhere, uh, pin it up on the wall or somewhere where you can uh, refer to it very quickly in case you have questions. The one thing that we did change inside of this, uh, inside of reports for FAST, so both the older reports from eGRANTS and the new reports from eGRANTS all use the parameter style that you would have seen inside of new reports. So the older reports, uh, the parameters would have displayed on the page. We've stopped doing that. It's now all going to display on an additional tab uh, that's launched when you click on that report name. But otherwise, it's going to operate in just the same way. The next menu item is uh, verification, and it contains your verified students and your verified student options. We're going to go over these in the next videos just by themselves, uh, but uh, that's where you're going to access those two uh, menu options from eGRANTS. Update GPAs and test scores. So uh, like verification, we're going to cover all of that in the next video. I uh, wanted to keep those separate just by themselves, um, but that's where you're going to access that same page that you would have accessed inside of eGRANTS. And we'll see that in the next video. Administration. So this option here is going to give you the ability to edit address and contact information for your school. Uh, it's also going to give you the ability to update some of your uh, personal information as well as reset your password. So here I can look at the high school profile. Uh, so if you used eGRANTS, this is one of those pages I was talking about. Uh, it's going to be very familiar. Um, it's in line to get a, a facelift. I don't know when that's going to happen, but hopefully very soon. But otherwise, during the transition time, that the format's going to be the exact same. All of it uh, in the same location that you would have accessed inside of eGRANTS. If you need to update it, it's going to work in the same way. You can go down through here and update it. Uh, one note. I would go through, um, uh, for any reason, um, especially during uh, personnel changes, but every so often, it's not a bad idea to go in and just review your contact information. Some of the updates that we uh, have planned for FAST will make more use of that contact information whenever we have updates. So um, uh, even if we didn't do that, though, it's always a good thing idea just to make sure all of this is kept up to date. Inside uh, the user, um, just a note, I think I got the notification my system went to sleep, so it may take a second for it to open up. It, uh, I'm the only one in the system right now. It goes to sleep just to save uh, energy. Uh, should not necessarily happen when in production just because of the uh, the amount of people in the system should come up any second, any second. But this particular option that I'm bringing up is going to give you the ability to go through and edit some of your information. We limit what you can actually change, but in case of a, a change in the last name, you can update it here. Or if your email has changed, you can update that one here. The last option inside of um, administration is going to give you the ability to reset your password. Again, we're using the, those new password requirements, uh, you, and you can change it. For example, uh, they normally expire every 90 days, but 
Uh, if you feel the need to go through and update it, you can update it yourself before then using that option. Help. Uh, so this is uh, the same page from eGrants. If you've used it before, uh, you're going to recognize it um, right away. It's all of the same documents that you would have found inside the eGrants help menu. No changes, exact same ones. While we're running both systems, by the way, uh, any update that we make to one location will also be updated in the other. So don't feel that there's a need to go through and search both places for updates. If something's updated in one place, it's going to be updated in the other location as well. Send the email. So you would use this uh, uh, in case you want to send a, a question to TSAC, uh, either about a particular student uh, having an issue with something, or if you had a general question about how a program works, you can use this especially useful if you're not sure the particular person the question should go to. Uh, when you send an email using this um, this page, that message is automatically going to be routed to the correct person. So uh, feel free to use it. One note, um, you can go through, uh, drag that box out to make that area a little bit bigger. So uh, a little bit easier to type that message out. The last thing that I'm going to go over in this video today is the timeout feature in FAST. Uh, we won't have a, an opportunity to demo it, uh, but we do have a 20 minute timeout feature that is meant to keep you from being logged out unexpectedly from the system. So uh, it was one of the big issues we know we had it, uh, inside of eGrants. Uh, you're inside uh, the system making updates on students and uh, lo and behold, you're logged out and you just lost all your data entry. So that was one of the big things that we wanted to make sure and address uh, to do that. We put a, a formalized log out or timeout inside the system. And what's going to happen is at the point that you're inactive for 20 minutes, a pop-up timer is going to uh, come up and ask you if you want to stay in the system or if you want to be logged out. It's going to give you 60 seconds. If you don't answer uh, either way, it's going to automatically log you out of the system. So uh, keep this in mind. So at any point um, where as long as you're actively uh, doing some type of data entry in the system or you're switching between pages in the system, you're never going to see that timeout. It's only after you cease any type of activity. You're not entering data. You're not saving. You're not going to different pages inside from the menu. Uh, if you have, uh, have been inactive, you stepped away, that pop-up timer is going to come up. Um, it's going to give you the opportunity. Maybe you're talking on the telephone with someone. You're not ready to be logged out. You can click on there to stay inside the system. It's going to keep you from being logged out, keep you from losing any type of data entry. However, if you've stepped away and you forgot to log out of the system, it will automatically log you out after 20 minutes. But that should be the only time that you're logged out of the system. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's never going to happen. We can't. Um, you know, there are a uh, uh, hundred million different things that can go wrong in the universe, but it should happen a lot less often than it happened inside of eGrants. So uh, we're hoping that that's going to make your life a lot easier, especially when you're reporting high school data um, this late spring, early summer. So this is the end of video one. Hopefully you like what you've seen so far. Uh, please send any questions or comments to me. Again, josh.moran at tn.gov. That's josh.moran at tn.gov. And I will see you in the next video.